you find yourselves stranded somewhat on Fidenza, a small island just off the coast of Tethia, in the slightly south of the part of Sword Coast you're probably more aware of. And you're missing a couple of crew members. Now, it wouldn't be right for the Salt King to be associated with words like mutiny, but nonetheless, your ship and your first mate are missing. Somehow. And you find yourself stuck in this inn in Fidenza. And it's an alright island, if, you know, you had a ship that you could leave it on. Nonetheless, you're sitting around this table. You've been told that somebody is looking for a crew. Not a ship, but a crew, at least, for a job. And you've been told to meet this noble woman at this inn. Lady Sonavella. And as you're sitting and waiting for noble woman, Captain Thule, what are you thinking right now? I'm thinking what a terrible time it is to be alive. I'm thinking that being on the land for too long is just a bit too much. We got to be out in the sea. We got to be feeling the waves and the wind against our chest and the drive for treasure and booty. Yar. That's what I'm thinking as I drink another drink. And your longing for adventure and treasure may be answered soon. As you see, a couple of guards walk in. Big fellas. So you'd associate with beating up pirates who are doing wrong. But, you know, you're probably okay for now. And behind them, a middle-aged woman in a plain but clearly expensive navy blue dress. And she walks in and looks straight towards your table. Lost my picture. I'm getting everything confused now. There we go. She looks straight towards your table, comes down and sits and looks at each of you. Her eyes fix on you, Captain Thule. And she introduces herself. I am Lady Sonavella. I believe you are the crew I have hired for this mission. That'd be right. That's us. All of us. We're the finest crew on this side of the water. We are the best. Someone. Hey, it's that spirit that will see us the victory. I drink way too much. Whoop. We're all right. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> hi. Nice to meet spoke. you, lady. <laughs> she shakes her head for a moment at this strange. You're definitely selling yourself to her. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Take another bite of whatever it is I'm eating without breaking eye contact. He's <laughs> definitely not looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> and after a moment of pleasantries, she explains to you, right, my family owns a trading company the Fidenz and Venture Company. And one of our ships has... We assumed it had been lost, the Porvenir. It seems it's been spotted at Falke. And I need a crew to go and retrieve it. None of the crew seem to be there anymore. I will arrange transport for you to the location, to Falke, to get onto it, but... I'll need you to sail it out. I assume you know how to sail. What? Are you slandering us, milady? 
Well, as far as I can tell, one of your crew is incredibly intoxicated. Another one is a dog. I am very capable, even when I drink a lot. <laughs> Don't you worry. Once I get some air in my face, we'll be great. I'm not technically a dog. <laughs> Excellent. Well then. The important part is, there are several crates of cargo on the Parvenir. You must retrieve those, even if you cannot retrieve the ship. The ship seems to have run aground, I'm not sure if it's saleable, but if it is, there'll be a bonus if you can bring it back. If not, bring me the crates. So you want us to retrie retrieve your cargo, and a bonus for what exactly? The ship, I think he said. Oh, we need to return the ship. Okay, return the ship for an extra bonus. As long as the crates return undamaged, I will pay you suitably. If you can return the ship, there'll be a bonus. Anything else you find on there, personal effects of the crew, is yours. I don't Arr. care. I need the crates. I like that. How big are the crates? Sorry, I missed that. How big are the crates? They're about, she gestures, somewhere around sort of two feet by two feet. They hold priceless family heirlooms. Nothing of value to you, you understand, but something I need retrieved. Oh, damaged. Absolutely, I could understand. It's very precious to you. We'll make sure that we return your heirlooms um, undamaged. What did I say, my lady? The best crew around. Well. <laughs> we are the dog. Me. Don't call me the dog. Oh! I. I apologize. I did not mean to call you the dog. It's been two weeks. Come on. A Brutus is kind of a very dog name, though, isn't it, eh? Give me a look. <laughs> Brutus is kind of a dog's name, but I apologize. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure to call Tie my fist down Brutus. on the table. Right. I'll go for a walk. <laughs> oh, Brutus. I have That's a look. Look, he's calm yourself down. <laughs> I sometimes Sorry, have a bit of a loose tongue, uh, loose tongue when I drink a little bit too much, so my apologies. <laughs> no. Where you know we don't mean it, Brutus. There We're only having a laugh. laugh. <laughs> Some friendly banter. That's what we're like, Lady Candelaria. Now the go, get, go get your ship back. And we'll get whatever it is that's in those two by two crates. It's not magic, is it? No. You may take the night to sleep off your excitement. I don't see any night. When is he coming here? We sail at dawn. Well, I'll definitely out. not be drunk <laughs> by that time. <laughs> <laughs> Petrana will be throwing you in the sea before we go to bed. That will wake you up. Oh yes. <laughs> Fully drenched. Maybe drowning you, depending <laughs> on how drunk he is. Right off the end of the plank <laughs> into the water. Just a reminder for those children that might be listening: you should never drink and swim. It is not a good combination. Nonetheless, she leaves, and her guards follow a moment later, eyeing you as they leave the room. And... Well, there you go. We've got ourselves some work. Let's have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and you spend the night in this tavern, drinking copiously. Yep. Everyone's drinking now, I feel like I need... <laughs> <laughs> is there 
anything you wish to do in preparation before the dawn comes? Breakfast. Good choice. <laughs> Mm -hmm. More drink! You need a bit of the air of the dog that bit you, eh? That's what you want, lad. And you manage to get suitable breakfast. The singers in the background in the inn. Seems to be the worked all night, bless her. She's got to keep the dock workers happy as well as the pirates. Yep. Nonetheless, you. Eventually, manage to consume your breakfast and get out, and you realise walking along the dock that you weren't given a ship name. But it's fairly easy to see the Grand Sonar, the flagship of the Fidenzen Venture Corporation, because it's massive, and there are several guards dressed in the same livery as the two that you saw yesterday. Look at the... here at these little muppets. That's unbelievable. What are they dressed like that for? I think there's some. They don't look that little, little to me, Captain. Well, what? only only little men like that would wear a big suit like that. Look at them. Terrible. Like yourself, one. <laughs> You'd suit it, Brutus. It'd do you well. Don't be taking the corporate dime now. We're a free trading corporation of our very own. We just happen like to be that. a little bit. Down on our luck, soul. Yes, we just don't have no ship. I don't know how we're gonna get to that island. Well, the giver is a ship. Oh, to you, isn't it? Me on that that big it's, ship. It's that one there. Oh, that one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. It, but I don't think you were quite with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Here, have another drink. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you might want to throw me in the water now. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just walk up to her and nudge, nudge her and see if she, if she falls sideways into the water or not. She's got some special feet that means she always rolls with advantage when she's drunk. <laughs> Do I roll with disadvantage? What skills no, should I advantage. Use? Advantage. <laughs> An advantage in acrobatics? Anything. Oh, you yeah. roll disadvantage yeah. when you're sober. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a drunken one. You're that so drunk. Every... Yeah. I'm gonna use an acrobatic thing. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, it's unintentional acrobatics. That's what we're doing. <laughs> sort of stumble on the dock. You'll be fine. Twenty-two. Oh. Yep, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> As the captain tries to nudge you off the dock, and you just wobble and stagger, he just misses you entirely. <laughs> nice try. The lady Sonavella doesn't know how good she's got it getting us on her ship. I think she's got an idea, Cam. <laughs> As you step up the gangplank, you're greeted by what well, you assume to be a valet. Except that he's very heavily armed. A heavily armed valet. And he shows you to a cabin at the rear of the ship explains that you will be staying in this cabin for the three days it will take you to get to Falke. You're free to wander the ship as you wish, eat with the crew in the galley. The only place that's off limits is Lady Sonavella's cabin at the other end of the ship, which is indicated to you and has four guards to the outside, so it's fairly clear that you're not supposed to be there. <laughs> so she be sailing with us then? Yes, she'll be waiting for you to return the cargo. Or the ship, if you can retrieve it. Well then, Colvin, will... you fancy your chances with the magnet, do you? That amazingly wealthy woman with her own private army. Boy, I have a reputation to a bold captain. So you'll be getting the door slammed on your face then? I recognise some of her men from last night. I'm sure I got beaten up in an alley by them a few weeks back. Oh. Oh, that could be a fun one to while away some of the days. Point them out if you see them and maybe we'll catch them on the ways. Ah, well, Captain. Shortly the vessel sets way. 
and you're left to your own devices. If there's anything that catches your eye, anything you wish to do on the ship. Other than drinking copiously. I want to find one specific guard and stare at him for the three days just to put him out <laughs> on ease. I like to drink. And I want to drink <laughs> and whore around. Uh, I mean, oh my goodness. Well, before we get there, you know, we have three. We're all days. sharing the same room, right? <laughs> yes. It's one cabin with four bunks. <laughs> oh, it's only one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, we're trying <laughs> oh, to sleep. I, you have been given a cabin, at least, but. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was other people around, but I didn't realize Some it was of gods. <laughs> and the guy, there's valets, there's valets. There is, there's a valet. I'm gonna try to use I'm my good. charisma uh, my charisma skills. Uh, wow. Yep. Never know. Might have a good night tonight. Oh, <laughs> we won't. <laughs> Get all the good rolls out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like nobody's getting any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for various different reasons. Well, the same reason, just <laughs> in different ways. Not half I would like to. Uh, I'll go for a I walk. Like to find yeah. a really I'm gonna go take Brutus for a walk. I want to go get That's some fresh air and maybe find myself some booty for tonight on the front <laughs> on the deck. Oh, maybe yeah. I can find someone over there, the valet or something. I'm Try to charm him. Persuasion check. There's plenty of crew members around. I mean, you would notice it's a fairly limited crew for a ship this size, but nonetheless, there's enough that you could probably draw someone away for the night. Seventeen. Yep. I'll just about do it. You managed to grab a reasonably good-looking sailor and... Don't you when you go back to the cabin... Everybody else has left you, so... Ah, uh, we're gonna have a good time here while everybody's gone. The note that says, gone walkies. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then. Captain okay. Thor, what are you doing? I'm going to see if I can make myself annoying with Lady Sonavella. All right. I've got a few things that we might ask. I don't know if anybody from the crew's come along with that, because it might be the next day. I don't know. You've um, if you would like us to it. come with you, can. Sure well, let's we go and talk. Annoy. Let's go and talk with the lady and see what else she can tell us about this adventure that she's got going for us. Yes, we'll go to her cabin because it's too bloody noisy on that one. Oh, is that Gartrana again? I'm afraid so, Captain. Well, at least she's getting herself some exercise and keeping her limbs supple and all that. Right then, good on her, eh? Let's go. We'll go and speak with the good lady, son of Ella. Yep. And you approach the entrance to the cabin at the other end. As you do so, one of the valets steps in front of the door and... I'm sorry, sir, she's with the sage. You'll have to wait. Well, we've got some of our own herbs. What does she else does she like? No, oh, <laughs> Senor Altivo, the sage. Senor Altivo, eh? Lordy da. Why is he coming on this excursion of ours then? Well, Alaska. He's the lady's philosophical advisor. Very philosophical, being out at sea. Looking into the inky darkness of black, never-ending water and waves can lead to some deep thoughts. So you made that sound very scary there, Cam. I w well, I wonder, when will she be done with the sage? You'll have to give her a couple of hours at least. My goodness, that's a deep session she's having. I wonder if she's... Getting anything worked out. Maybe I could help her afterwards. Her. Anyway, <laughs> let's keep exploring around the trip. The ship. We'll see what else there is. What do you recommend to eat at the galley, sir? Whatever the cook is serving. It's all just as bad as each other. 
orange then. Oh, it's a bit of slop. Lovely. By any chance, do you know anything about this cargo that we're supposed to be collecting? No. Keep you in the dark too, does she? It's not my job to know about cargo. It's my job to protect this door. He's doing a fine job. Thank you, sir. How many of those suits have you got? Those ones that you're wearing? Do you have one for each day? I bet you do. You're fancy. Look at this money. And I'll go up to him and I kind of just pull out one of the tassels or whatever he's got hanging off the, hanging off the shoulder from the pauldrons. Hey, Bruce, respond. maybe we should go. <laughs> Stands there in front of the door. <laughs> I lean against um, like, the side of the boat, just watch. <laughs> or see what happens. Oh. You mind if I stand behind you just a little bit, do you? I look over at you. I don't exactly tower over you, but I, but I probably block vision through <laughs> wideness. The right. Well, come on, lads. There's no sport to be had here. Let's go and see where else we can raise a rebel. All right. Let's be going. To the galley, I guess. Right then. And you head down to the galley. It's not too impressive compared to galleys you've seen on ships of this size, but there's people there and there's food there, which seems to be the two major requirements of a galley. The people are eating the food, so it can't be that bad. And joining the queue there, eventually you get dished out some what appears to be some kind of stew, at least. Which is, you know, things are looking up. Decent stew, it's it got something in it. Brutus seems to be okay with it. Yeah. It's not be too bad, actually, Captain. Arr, it's alright, isn't it? it? Must put some of that sage in it. I stare at the captain's I, meal after finishing mine. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I hope they haven't put any sage in there at all. <laughs> you the finish that, Captain. How long has it been? <laughs> How long do you need? Uh, I need at least one hour. <laughs> An hour? Jesus Christ. Uh, yep. Just let me know when... Yeah. when does an hour went by. Well, you may have done it 60 times, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Given the time that the captain was using to antagonize the guards, and they've all wandered off to the galley, it's been an hour or so by now. Alright. So I joined the party. Yep, you find them in the galley. Brutus is eyeing up every meal around him that isn't his. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Um, I'm kind of hungry now. Um, is that slop? It'd be stew, actually. Oh, stew. And not bad. Oh, pretty good. Uh, what's in there? Yes. Um, a bit of the sage, apparently. Oh. It looks good. Can I... Uh, can it's got I... green bits in it. It's got brown bits in it. Uh, a little bit of brown bits. and Oh, that looks kind of good. Uh, I'm I'm going to ask for, uh, for some stew as well. Stew, please! If you're lucky, you <laughs> might get the bits at the bottom of the pan. Oh, <laughs> yes, already... Bits. The thick congealed bits have got real sustenance in them. But <laughs> drawing onto the table. It means the marrow. That's the part mm. I like. And eventually, you manage to secure yourself a bowl of stew with some of the good bits from the bottom of the pan. Mm. I used to turn up later. I sit right next to you and stare at the bowl. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I had a brother like you. He always used to eat. Everything before it was down, we learned to have eating competitions. Eat as fast as you could, and that way no one would be able to get your leftovers. Oh, nobody's so, going to get my leftovers. You done with the bowl. Oh, it's so Here good. You go. Here you Brutus. go, you want the bowl? I lick, that's not licking the bowl. There's the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, it's not yeah, one knot yeah. in it. No, I usually don't lick the bowls. I usually just, um, I just usually just lick the plates. So, um, 
Maybe I can get. Uh... <laughs> You're missing out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, one second. Yeah. <laughs> Tries to start looking. At <laughs> wow, that was really good. As you clean the balls, save some and wash it up. Work. <laughs> wash it down with a little bit of uh, of ale here. That's so good. And as you're finishing your stews, you notice a gentleman that doesn't seem like he'd fit on a boat has walked in. Uh, wide. Hmm. <laughs> a little bit. Who's that guy very sort of slender in the arms, not much muscle build, but a growing belly, definitely, and balding, big, large moustaches. That there be a bureaucrat. Watch that be a lover right there. Don't be yeah. chasing him. Um, uh, he doesn't fit in uh, with this area. He's bald. He's not someone and... who works for a living. Put it that way. Yeah. Some kind of businessman. Very soft. Uh, it's a businessman. He's from the city. Probably sent here by the king. Look at him. He's never worked a day. I bet he's got soft hands. <laughs> a woman's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a black out of reference. As you're watching the gentleman, he gets some stew and sort of turns his nose up at it a bit, sits down at a corner of a table on his own and eats his stew. He looked like the kind to be counting money. Mm -hmm. I think maybe he's got some on him. Let's go see if we can relieve him of it. <laughs> Good maybe idea. We'll the stew. <laughs> Um, I, I go over and um, stand, put my best posh voice, um, and I say, Oh, my, di my dear sir, why don't you come and sit with us? We'd love to have you regale us of your stories. He looks up at you. Oh, I'm, I'm quite all right here, thank you. I oh, don't I, believe we've I, met. He sticks out his hand. I'm Captain Thule. Currently ah. out with a ship. Not the captain of this vessel, of course. I've met the captain of this vessel. And Senor Altivo. Oh. Oh. Yes, come. Please, come and sit with us, Senor Altivo, and give us some of your wisdom. Hmm, and certainly. Yeah, be regaling. Let us know what has happened around your you city. Show. Picks up his stew and comes to join you at your section of the table. Sits down and continues eating. And you see, he's sort of, as he takes a bite of the stew, a spoonful of the stew, his face sort of. He's not enjoying it, certainly. Good, <laughs> it's not it? the sort of food he's used to. I don't think that uh, that soup is. Uh, you don't usually eat soup, do you? Or drink soup? You know, those chewy bits, that's the gristle. That's the best part! That's the best part of these meals. I'm fairly certain that shouldn't be there. Um, are you familiar? Are you used to eating a certain type of meal? Uh, not this. I'll finish it if you don't want it. He pushes the ball across to you. <laughs> 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 so what brings you out here on the ship, then? You don't look altogether comfortable, if you don't mind me saying so. I am a, a scholar of alchemy, of geology, of oceanology. I work closely with the Lady Sonavella. Oh, Lady Sonavella. So you are looking at understanding more about the ocean? I'm looking at something more about anything. But right now I'm on he's this one. He's that's what he's doing right now. Ain't that right? I don't believe I know the term. Well, you're being a scholar and you got her own scholar, in it? That, ah, exactly I that. See. <laughs> <laughs> We've been around a bit ourselves. We've learned a few things, as you can tell. I learned how much blood comes out when you lose a leg. I learned never to trust your first mate if he looks like he's got your eyes on your ship. 
It's only a theory, yeah. mind. It's only a theory. Mm-hmm. I've learned to work with a dog. And not get thrown in the ocean. Uh, There's still uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> not just any dog there, Katana. He's a sea dog. He's the best sort of dog there sea is. Sea dog. That's me, sea dog. That's good recovery, oh, sea dog. And uh, did he Thank recover long-lost treasure from the bottom of the ocean? Uh, well, not quite. I oh. lost an eye. Learned how to channel the power of an ancient kraken creature. The norm, you know. Oh, a kraken. Yeah, those things are huge. Probably. Oh. I don't remember. It's quite far away. <laughs> Senior Ativo, what do you know about these crates that we've been sent to rescue? We've been told they're not magic. I can only assume, then, that with you being here, there must be some scholarly interest in them. Uh, not this in the, 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 cool not the heirlooms, no. That's not my purpose here. Hmm, so what is your purpose? I advise the lady. I make reports on the state of the oceans. Hmm. Big and wet. It looks right. And blue. Uh, I have daytime. some books to get back to. All right. He steps up and starts to walk away. Can I? Can we perceive if he's carrying anything of any value among, on his person? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make me a perception check. Can I make an insight check based on if he does oh. know anything about the crates? May I make a perception uh, check yeah, as well? Just um, because I. Am... Oh, you're Please. far, far. Just throw some more. Dice. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> throw dice around the table. We like throwing dice around the table. Yeah. And, oh. Uh, Calden, you do notice that he's definitely sort of. There's one pocket in this sort of robe he's wearing that's laden heavier than the others, and he's definitely sort of his hands protective of it, as if Ooh. he's carrying something of value in there. It may be that he don't trust us, Captain. See the way he's holding his hand over that pocket. Mm. Interesting. Uh, maybe somebody can try to sneak up and grab it from him. We could do that. However, we are on a ship. We have no means of escape. Mm -hmm. Should we be caught? Well, yes. It's not that I will be caught, of course, because I'm very good at that kind of thing. But... I wonder if it's a kitten. Oh, never mind. It might not be. Bad luck. To what? See. Yeah, I was just teasing you, Brutus. Listen, when something's small like that, it's valuable. Mm -hmm. and maybe might be a block he, of cheese. Well, I'm thinking that maybe he's uh, some sort of magic user. Yeah, maybe he's a cast of some description. Maybe he knows some tricks. We could use someone like that. I wonder if he'd come with us and help us. Maybe... I don't know. Then we're going to run into some trouble, don't you think? They've got all these heavies here, and they're sending us onto the shipwreck. Don't you think that's a bit suspicious? Like, we're expendable. Like, he does, like, maybe they don't want to waste their nice uniforms getting dirty in the ship, and they think that we're good enough for it. Long as we're getting maybe. paid. Yes. Maybe you just overstole our ability, Captain. <laughs> I've never done that and lived to regret it. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if his uh, noble upbringing will, he will, if he will say yes, given that he's a scholar, he may just shoo us away like, haha, how dare you ask me to follow you? It may be, it will depend whether there's anything of interest for him mm -hmm. on that ship. Possibly. Is there Wait a way up. to talk to him? To Lady Sanavella and ask her if there's something that would interest them, or ask well, him. She's no longer conversing with the sage, so I suppose that means she is free. Are you done licking the balls, there, Brutus? I'm licking the what, Captain? Balls left to lick. <laughs> <laughs> He's cleaning the bottom as well. Oh, it's, yeah, don't miss that. I that, don't that, that's do that part. anymore, Cam. The bottom of the balls. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> I misunderstood. Shall we get going, Cam? 
I think we should. Yes. He's got some fresh air. Uh, I think Golden might need a bit of fresh air and sea salt, sea salt on him. Just oh, so. Honestly, Captain, I'm absolutely fine. There's no, <laughs> nothing to say it's here. It's amazing what a good <laughs> bowl of stew can do for you. Filling up your belly. Right then. Let's get up to see this lady. See what she's got in store for us. Maybe she'll tell us a bit more this time. <clears throat> she'll yeah. approach the cabin. Yeah. You walk over to the cabin and... There's nobody standing in front of the door now. The valets are just stood to the sides of the door. It seems like you can probably walk in. Knock. Whatever you wish to do. It is a lady, Captain. I suggest we knock first. I, I think you're right there. No guys with tassels aren't there anymore. Let's just give a quiet knock on the door and we'll walk in like proper gentlemen. And you knock on the door and there's a call from inside. Enter. I open the door. And you see Lady Sonavella with... A table in front of her that seems to be covered in books full of numbers. Doesn't really make sense to you. Seems complicated. She's going through some of these numbers. She's got a quill in one hand. She looks up at you and goes, Ah. What, what do you want? We were just discussing things with Senior Ativo. Yeah. Pops up, he really... seems like he is a very clever man. And we're looking at your guards all around. Are you expecting trouble of any kind on this voyage, milady? No, I just prefer to have some muscular help along in case of... She looks at you and looks at your weapons. Situations. But right, the sea be a dangerous place. You're wise to take precautions. Is there anything else, Captain Tuligo? These boxes and this vessel that you're having us boarding. What do you yeah. really think's in there? What do you really think is in there? What do you think is happening? Why? I think it has my cargo and presumably dead or missing members of crew that should have been returning that cargo. The rest is for Insight you to discover. <laughs> Does she know more than she's letting on? Go ahead and roll. Not with that roll. Anybody backing me up? I can give a backup if you want. <laughs> Quick, call for someone with high wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Brutus, she definitely knows more than she's letting on. I smell she's not telling us everything, Captain. Well, that be so. No, me lady, we're here. We're working for you. But we can't do that if we don't know the full facts. We like to be prepared, you see. We likes to plan. He likes to know what's in stores for us all. And you're not telling us everything. Brutus has got a nose. He sniffs out that kind of trouble. So why don't you be forthright with us? We'll be much better served at getting your precious cargo back. Yes? And I'm trying to be intimidating. All right, go ahead and roll <laughs> <laughs> It's saying... That's right! Be forthright with us! So, yeah, I'll take the 18th. Really at all. <laughs> oh, I rolled That's 22. That's not looking for that one, man. <laughs> I was just, the 18 was the one that I rolled for. I didn't realise it actually rolled Ooh. twice automatically because it was light grey and I didn't see it. I was I was going for an 18 and a 6. Anyway, 18. <laughs> she looks at you and goes, Yes, you're. We've heard from a couple of crew members that managed to get a message off that the Povnir was attacked by something before it ended up at Falke. 
That's all I have for you, Captain. You have your job. You're going to be well compensated. Retrieve that cargo. Acte. From the sea, was it? I'm not as much of a naval person as yourself, Captain, but I assume ships are most commonly attacked from the sea, yes. I'm very glad to hear it wasn't from the air, milady. That would have been something very different. Very different. What does forthright mean? Tell you after. I'm sure you can find a dictionary somewhere else. I have work to do. And Ooh, she that would have a question to ask the lady. List of numbers. As you say that, Brutus, her eye just lifts up and looks at you. Captain, if you give me permission to ask her a question, it could be beneficial. Brutus, you know you've got the wisest head among us and the best nose for sniffing out trouble. Ask away. What is this? Best nose, yeah. Well, we know how yes. big these crates are, but how many crates is it we're supposed to be getting? Well, we're, I think there's a, there's a two by two. Yeah, that's the size, but how many of them? How many? Um, uh, she just mentioned a uh, two by two. Well, that's what I'm asking her. <laughs> 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 there will be mm, between four and twelve of them, assuming that's the crew hasn't run off with disparity. all of them. Well, there were twelve, but I mean, I assume a wrecked ship has looters. So there's 12 cargo, and one of those cargoes is probably the heirloom. The heirloom. All of them. I require oh, every heirloom. crate you can find. It's a lot of cargo. That's a lot of heirlooms. You will be paid for each crate. Nice. No, I did. No, if, uh, if we find the heirlooms, uh, given that they were attacked, and we bring them back and they're damaged, are we still going to get the full value? As long as what is inside remains intact, you will be paid for each of them. Terrific. But I must reiterate, do not open the crates. They must be returned in the condition you find them in. Why would we do that then, my lady? It's none of our business, is it? What if one of the crates is broken open, but the thing inside is undamaged? Then put it in a bag. Mm. How it will we know which crate crates we're supposed to be bringing over if we don't open them? <clears throat> Just bring me every crate marked with the logo. Oh, your indicates. logo. Oh, Pretty much everything in the room is branded with the Fidendon Venture Company logo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I understand. Oh, that logo! The Fidenza Venture Company logo. That logo. Seems fairly clear from books? the room itself that everything you'd find probably would be brand in the same way. Do you have any no, earplugs we can I use? I do not have earplugs. It gets very noisy in our cabin at night. Excellent. I glance over. <laughs> um, uh, who's noisy? You're talking about Brutus, right? He snores no, too much. No, it's Brutus who's talking. Oh, oh I, oh, I'm sorry, Brutus. Um, I, do, I walk out. He does wake himself up snoring sometime, and I follow him. But it's oh, cool. Definitely. Thanks for your, thanks for your. And as you start to walk out, she's already company, gone back to the. My lady, you really are Oops. the finest of all of us. You are incredibly wonderful. Make you feel candida. <laughs> Excellent. Please don't come back. Yeah. How will we bring the crates back if we don't come back? <laughs> if we don't, like, do you want us to speak to a specific person? We don't mean to bother you. No, I think oh, we do. I am one quite of the glad to bother her. She's not. <laughs> yeah, when we're outside, I'm saying this. <laughs> She does not seem too pleased with us just questioning her all over and over again. No. Maybe she's more of a cat person. Well, <laughs> you right there, Bruce. Whoa. 
go with. Well, maybe maybe that sage does have a kitten in his pocket after all. Who knows what magics are capable of? I do not believe his story, Senor. I think he is saying that he's a certain person, and this is what he does, the Senor Rigato. But I think we should keep an eye on him. I didn't know anything about the crates, anyway. Because I find it a little strange that uh, he's uh, on his voyage. And well, uh, he... I do think that there's one thing for certain about this ship. They've got some good grog. Let's go and have a drink. What says go you? Down. Hi, let's go. Well, I am. I'm going to climb up to the crow's nest instead. <clears throat> and just meditate. And if there's a person up there, awkwardly stare at them. <laughs> there's definitely someone up there. At the top of the main mast. And you climb up. There's more or less enough room. You're fairly small. I mean, you're wide, but you're wide. fairly small. <laughs> Just gonna stand next to him, stare at him, and quietly meditate internally, and hopefully put him. <laughs> yeah, after you put stare him at him off. for a few minutes, he looks down at you and goes, "You're supposed to stare out there." He gestures at the ocean as a whole. Is there anything I just can't stare? I'm like staring through him at this point. After a minute, he seems to mostly ignore you. He carries on looking out. All right. You spoke to good lady. Is there anything else you wish to do for the rest of this voyage, or shall we skip ahead to arriving? Arriving, arriving. Yeah, skipping ahead sounds like a good idea to me. Heels. Hi, hi. No other plans. <clears throat> nope. Skip it, dude. So you mess around in this vessel, as it were, for a few days, as you approach under Falke proper and as you start to see the sort of the strip of dark green on the horizon that indicates Falke and as you move closer to this sort of the wetlands, the deep dark green trees of this island and you start to see what's clearly a large ship, a ship of the line marooned as it were on this island sort of stuck on one side Looks as if it's been run aground, maybe damaged, from what you can see, but you're not really all that close to it currently. Well, is it is it close to the shore? As in, we can get it get to it from the shore, or it's a little distance from shore. You assume, obviously, there are small boats on your vessel. You assume yeah. that a boat would be lowered for you. Yeah, no, I think Colden's probably the kind of person that's probably looking at the escape route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could probably jump off it and swim to shore if you need to get to Falke, but Falke is a relatively small island. It's not really inhabited at all. You're not sure how you'd get off Falke without right. a boat. Yeah. Did the ship that was run aground, how badly run aground is it? It looks like... You've got some experience of ships. It's <laughs> It looks like it has run aground at some points and been washed out by the tide. It seems to be floating on its own. It's maybe stuck in a sandbar. It's a lot closer to land than you would expect a ship of that size to be, but it doesn't seem would, to be sinking. Would, it seems say, like would it we know? Would we know? Float. Yeah, no. it's not hold then, as far as we can tell. Yeah, as far as you can tell, it's not. There aren't any holes below the waterline. It's definitely floating of its own accord, right. or stuck on a sandbar. But yeah. it's not listing over like you'd expect a ship that was stuck to be. It's not visibly got huge holes in it. Right. So we'll be able... Will we be able... Will we be able to... uh, It has no holes, so will we be able to bring the ship back? We'll have to check if it's got holes or not when we get to it. Yeah. It's got no holes, hopefully we can sail it. It would be nice to get a ship of our own again. We'd be keeping it. I think. I don't think I don't think we get to keep it, sir. So. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I think I should probably uh if this island's so tiny, I should probably try to cast aid on you guys. Um so this is a spell that will last for eight hours. How many that? Uh and it's one action and it gives you your allies, three of you, toughness and resolve. 
uh, each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increase by 5 for the duration. If I use a third level or higher, a target's hit point increases by an additional 5 for each slot level above second level. Ooh. So this is a uh, 8 is very helpful. Um, if you will be fight doing most of the fighting, I do not mind giving you all aid while I stand back to heal you if we get into combat. Nobody's anything about fighting. Yeah, that's that's awesome. possibly going to you will be doing most of the fighting halfway through. <laughs> yeah. I crack my knuckles and my chaos wagon. As we get closer <laughs> to this ship, I'm assuming we're going to get into fights, so it takes... I hope this, so. <laughs> yeah, this, this is going to last eight hours, so... Seems I think to be what Lady was saying. We could expect anything from looters to one of your great undersea denizens there, Colden. They are the ones who like to reach up with their tentacles and haul you under. To... But you stop talking like that, Captain. You're frightening me again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I cast aid, uh, and yep. you guys will get an additional ten, temper, uh, temper, uh, well, they're not additional, they're not, not, temporary, not temporary, but regular HP. No, they are, your hit point maximum and your current hit points increase by five. They aren't considered temporary hit points, they are permanent hit points yes, for yes. a temporary period uh, yeah. of time. Which is confusing. I do apologize. I was thinking of Twilight Sanctuary, that is temporary. No, yeah. This one aid so is for your actual... Uh, HP. Um, nice. So Brutus, Captain, and Colden, you all get 10 additional HP. Boys. 10 additional HP, nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel I'm stronger already. Go, so just put your HP up by 10. You, you feel... You <laughs> feel well, we've had long rest. We've had many yes, long rests. You've had a couple of opportunities for long rest over the course of this journey. So <laughs> Maybe resetting all me things. You could sleep through Brutus's snoring at least. Is there a button? Hey. Or do you do it? Uh, a button. It's underneath your hit dice, Captain. Yeah, it's underneath your hit dice. Oh, I see it. it. Says L rest. I go over Thank to you, each one of you, you and bl not bless you, but cast this aid on you. Touch each of your shoulders. Cortana, you I know get on the that land we, now, Captain. we like to make fun of you, but you really are an angel in your own way, aren't you, Milas? Oh. Well done. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Magic I makes me feel tingly. <laughs> In your own way, that is. I know, I'm, I'm a little strange, I know. <laughs> you are pretty strange. There's the I dog. Know. But I think <laughs> the dog's strange. There's strangely. the talking dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's dog folk. I think he looks like a bulldog, doesn't he? I will fight you. <gasps> I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. and you've given him extra hit points as well. Oh. You don't want to be doing that. Let's get Save to this it. island. Save I, I, it for I, I, whatever's I, on that island or the found its way onto this ship. He, I am. Brutus, I apologize. I wonder if... Well, we'll find out soon enough. Where's the jolly? We could get down on that. Are we ready? Are we close? Can we get on the little boats, the jollies, and just get away over there? Having your discussions and insulting the dog folk... You have pulled up fairly close to the Parvenir. The Grand Snare lays anchor, lays anchor, and Lady Son of Valor orders one of the boats to be lowered for you. With anchor. As you. It's not a waste of my time. As you climb down into the boat, she looks down at you and reminds you. And remember, bring them back in. The condition you find them in, they must not be damaged, unless they were already damaged. Do not open the crates. And her head disappears over the rail. Well, she's very fussy, isn't she? Yeah, she's a pain in the arse, that one. <laughs> I do you trust not. her, Captain? I don't know if I trust her. Do you trust her, Brutus? She's I paying us. So I, I trust her implicitly. <laughs> I am um, going to cast Vigilant Blessing on remember. If the best strength skill, and who would that be? I imagine it's Brutus. Nope. Oh, right. Brutus. Nope. It's, it's definitely it's Captain Thule. Captain Thule. The captain is enormous. He is a Goliath. He is absolutely massive, <laughs> oh. covered in muscles. Oh, right. He is clearly visibly the strongest among you. Captain Thule. <laughs> you get initiative. 
I think also... Doesn't he already get advantage on initiative, though? He does, He's actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, yeah. I'll cast he it on... He advantage on advantage of... You'll get an advantage <laughs> Can you get dual yeah. advantage? You no. know us well, Katrana. You choose wisely, because you know us. You've sailed with us enough times and been in enough battles with us. Yes, um, coin. Captain uh, Thol, uh, I'm going to try to befriend Brutus, because I kind of insulted him, so I'm going to give him the Vigilant Blessing. That's all right, you're all right. Yeah. yeah. You gave me your stew. I'm your friend for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so sweet, yes. <laughs> I'll advantage on your next initiative roll, Paul. Just the next one. Yeah, yeah. Alright, and as you roll this small boat across, um, you can see the Parvenir is in what seems to be good shape from what you can see of it. You would assume you can get on through the ladders on the sides as you normally would a ship of the line if you were trying to board it from the water. Or you could climb up there if you needed to. Hey guys, there's a poop deck! All oh, ships have a poop, poop deck. deck. <laughs> <laughs> they do when Brutus is on it. <laughs> <laughs> he poops a lot, so that's gonna be... It's right in the back of the ship. I take it back what I said about being your friend. <laughs> Come on, we can climb up this without any trouble. Up. Come on, there's some easy climbing ladders there, I'm sure. Yes. Oh, cargo yep. hold is in the bottom here. Is there? Oh, we'll check the cargo hold. Yes, uh, we're probably gonna find the heirlooms in that area. We need to get on deck first. So climb up. Aye. Maybe we should check to see that the masts are all intact so that we could sail this thing away if we need to. Yeah, and what as says you're you, Colden? It's fairly easy to see. The various masts seem to be intact and fine. Can the... I examine the sails, being a topman? Yeah. The shrouds and rat lines all seem to be in place and correct. The sails all seem to be correct. As far as you can tell, it seems like it's a seaworthy vessel from this side, at least. It, you already judged that it floats. It seems like you should be able to just sail it away if you need to. Wait for the high tide. And we'll get this ship line blessed and Chris, under under our captaincy. I like that. Captain you probably check it out first, Captain. Well, you never know what happened here. Let's get up there then. Bit weird that there's no crew on this ship at all. I yeah, jump. I jump off. Perfectly intact. I jump off the boat onto the side. Is there? Is there like a net or a light or a ladder or anything a, on this side? Fairly normal ladder on the side. So. Yeah, ladder. Just jump off the boat onto the ladder. You Pull that one up, and we'll get back. Be the good ship Patreon. <laughs> Somehow put you all slightly too far forward of the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> We moved after we climbed up. <laughs> you collectively climb up the ladder, and as you climb over the wall of the deck here, the sun beating down on you, the sails rigging creaks, and it feels just like any other ship you're on. It's quiet. Doesn't seem to be any crew or any sign of crew. The deck seems fairly well maintained, other than some recent bird droppings. Uh... I mean, it seems like there'd be someone sweeping it, at least. You'd expect more stuff to be around otherwise, but... Eerily still. Is there any blood? I don't like that. Don't like this cat. Make me a perception Very check. quiet. There's not even any gulls in my ear. That's a change. Wow. Uh, You see a couple of... What you'd assume could be a couple of drops of blood. Some scuffs around some of the... Wood, especially around the main mast. Some tears at the bottom of some of the sails that seem to indicate maybe there was a struggle at some point, or some sort of fight, but nothing of the level that would indicate the disappearance of a crew complement of this size, certainly. Hmm. Something strange happened here, Captain. I don't think this was a normal uh, attack. Hmm, they must be around. If they attack, they must uh, they must be un under the uh, in the lower decks. 
Well, there's no point in just leaving it to superstition. We've got to see it with our own eyes. Let's get down under. Let's go to... Let's get down to that cargo hold. Aye. Get down under. Aye. There's a few ways down from here. There's cargo grates. If you move them out, you could get down to the upper gun deck, which is the deck below the main deck. Uh, there's some stairs far and aft that could take you down there. Or you could explore the cabins up here first if you wanted to make mm. sure there's nobody around above decks. I don't know what power it is, but I find myself stuck in my boots. Oh, yes. You are stuck yes. in your boots. And maybe we um, should clear from the top down. At least mm. things can't come from behind then. I think it'd be a good idea so we don't get flanked. Let me Take just have a look or... down there and see what there is. And I walk over to one of the grates and lift it up. Yeah. Just poke my head down. And you can lift up the edge of one of these grates. You look down onto what would be the upper gun deck. And you see what looks like a gun deck down there, pretty much. It's mm. full of hammocks strung between various posts. Cannons sticking out of all the halls. Various cobwebs. Perfectly normal on a ship. Nobody dusts the gun deck. Uh, you see the edge of the capstan, where you'd assume the capstan to be. Doesn't seem to be anybody down there. Maybe a few bits of loose personal belongings and such in the hammocks. Do we see anything that indicates a struggle? With an uh, maybe a perception check. I rolled it. Sorry, and you didn't, yes. I should have told you what it was, but I, <laughs> I didn't. was looking at something else. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, no, you you can definitely spy a few bits and pieces on the hammocks, but nothing that indicates a struggle. Just, it seems like people have left stuff there. Like, you'd assume if peop if the crew had left here en masse, they'd have taken their belongings with them. There seems to be various bits still around that would seem that. So the things you'd expect people to take with them, small heirlooms, bits of scrimshaw, that you can clearly see from here, that have been left. But definitely not uh, okay, this number okay, of leave. crew members. I lean back up and just drop the, the big grating back in place and it just it makes a, a loud noise. Yep. That is very loud. Ooh, well, you, you're gonna... Uh, that was kind of loud. Did you want to make so much noise? Be easier fighting whatever boogeymen have inhabited this. It's just a simple case of getting down to the cargo hold, picking up some boxes for the good lady... Get him back. It's going to be simple, isn't it? It's going to be oh. simple. Yes, you don't want to check like, any of the be here to hear it anyway. It's going to be very simple, but we, we should probably get a surprise advantage on them. You're you so don't want to check with the her cabins up here. Being something here that's done toward. I mean, I agree it's a bit strange that we've been put on here rather than any one of their well dressed henchmen, but, you know. Let's get up there. Good idea, Brutus. Maybe. Let's go and maybe let's they go up. Captain's log somewhere that we. Look um, for. should we check this cabin up here? Walk up to whatever doors there are oh, in right. the edges. Of... We are splitting up here. Give me one second. <laughs> uh, Brutus, we'll go with you first. You step up onto the quarter deck, which. It feels a bit weird for you, because normally the quarter deck on a ship like this is reserved for officers. Anything behind the main mast is reserved for officers, but nobody seems to stop you, so you step up onto the quarter deck. And you see what you'd expect to see on a quarter deck. Cannons. The helm itself. You step up past that onto the aft castle. And more cannons. There's definitely... There's no sign of anybody up here doors to the various cabins there's a cabin below the quarter deck a cabin below the aft castle and this cabin at the rear below the poop deck are the cannons loaded? Uh, you'd have to sort of lean out and check one they're not fused, there's no fuses in the fuse holes but you can't tell if there's ball in there unless you lean if, out and if... look down the end as it were if I go yeah, with fuck. with um, with Brutus, perhaps I can suggest then uh, hey, maybe you can hold me legs and I'll have a look out. 
Right. <laughs> the two um, short people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay behind there, Captain, um, <laughs> Captain Paul. I can't see anything wrong with this idea. This <laughs> is all perfectly normal. There's nothing, nothing to worry about. I'm going to drop you. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the cannon be loaded and it fire <laughs> while I'm looking down it. <laughs> don't worry, enough used. <laughs> Just don't put your head where the cannon would come out. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Oh, Brutus you... wants to know, so we're going to find Take out. Take a moment to... Calden climbs onto the cannon, straddles it, and wiggles his way along the end. Brutus grabs onto your ankles as you lean over. Yeah. Look down <laughs> the muzzle of the cannon. There's definitely a ball in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good way. Just make sure it doesn't go off accidentally, because you'll lose your head. Hey, Brutus, it'd be loaded. <laughs> Maybe they're just getting prepared. Uh -oh. I suppose leaving them loaded makes more sense to not having them be loaded. Do you want me to pull you back up yet? Aye, that'd be a good idea. Aye. I'll pull them back up. <laughs> right. Should we check these cabins? Aye, let's do that. Alright. Uh, I go to open the door. Okay, you are on the after castle, which means you'd know... Hang on, I've got something. There's a weird animation happening, just... Off your yeah, screen, I can but it's see that. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Let me fix that. One second. <laughs> I was hoping if I didn't mention it, nobody else would. No, the thing is, it shouldn't be doing that for obvious <laughs> reasons. Let me just fix that. Well, if worse okay. comes to worse, there's at least okay. a few lifeboats here. <laughs> yeah. And you, you're aware that on a ship this size, the what you'd call a poop cabin, the room below the poop deck, is generally used for maps. It's used for the storage of maps, and the officers would gather there to chart out uh, where they want to be, as it were. It would be interesting to see where they were supposed to be heading to. I was just, yeah, I was just thinking that. Because um, mm -hmm. the, the ship went missing, but she didn't tell us where it went missing, did she? We just know that it turned up here. Yeah, yeah, we should definitely check that. Just give me one moment, I've gotten lost. Oh, no worries. In my PDF. My <laughs> PDF really <laughs> keeps freezing, which is not helpful to me. <laughs> who wants to uh, Who wants to check the map? We're, we're checking up here. I think you've moved to the... I think you're at the other end of the ship, currently. Yes. Yeah, we've gone to the... We've gone to the short arses have gone to the rear of the ship. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where... They're finding the map room, and you guys at the front of the ship will come back to you in one second. In perfect doggy fashion, I went straight to the behind. Pretty much. <laughs> and as you open... <clears throat> you open the door to the map room, and... One second. And what you see in here is various maps, obviously. Let me drop you in the... There we go. Sorry, I chat. Uh, can he show you what they're seeing at the moment? Because we're not there. You'll have to just <laughs> use the imagination. Maybe you could have I, 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 I forgot. I thought we were near the poop deck, and um, I guess I. Um, yes. Maybe uh, the captain can appear in here as a vision for everybody at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fairly oh, the small room, off. to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> just put him on the bench. <laughs> and through the. Small portholes on the walls here. Sunlight glances off the glass-fronted cabinets that are stuffed with maps, charts, logs. You're vaguely aware that charts will be stored here. It's not really your area of expertise. On a small table here seems to be a new, relatively accurate map of Low Salt Blight, which is the area around Felke. Sort of the chain of islands between here and... Fidenza and Tethia proper. And along one wall, a small couch, there's a ratty red blanket that covers a what seems to be a man sized form. Looks like there's something underneath the, uh, the grey blanket over there. As All you right. look closer, as you. As your eyes adjust to this room, there's definitely someone sleeping there. A older man with a great 
grey beard and what seems to be sailor's clothing. First human presence you've seen on the ship, definitely. Got a crewman here. Wake him up. See what happens. <laughs> Aye. Do you want me I to sh- wake him up? Nah, I shake him. He's just an old man, he'll be alright. Yeah, shake him and he sort of wakens groggily for a second then. Yeah, yes, yes. What is it? Who are you, eh? What are you doing here? Uh, Captain Kayo Yoramin. You're... You be the captain of this vessel? No, no, I'm the captain of the Manzo. My <laughs> my vessel was sunk and the crew of the Porvenir rescued me. What happened to the crew of the Porvenir? They were killed and fled from the parasites below. They were killed and fled. Well, not at the same time. Some were killed, some fled. Just making the distinction. What be a parasite? There are mm, things below the lower decks. You... You are... You are not officers. And he sort of... He stands up straighter as he's eyeing you more and realises you don't really have the bearing of naval no, officers. definitely not. <laughs> We're your you, rescue party, if you play your cards right. Yes, you must... You'll respect my rank, I am captain, I outrank you. I you spit will, on the floor. <laughs> you will come I'll with me and you, defeat you are. parasites. Wait a minute, you say there's something on this ship below decks. We should warn the captain. Oh, bollocks. Uh, you, captain, whatever your face is. We're here to do a job, don't get in our way. And if you play your cards right, we'll make sure you get away with us. Very Sound well. good? Yes, take me to your captain. Alright. And he reaches under the cushions on this couch and pulls out a, a cutlass and a sort of jungle machete, almost, and tucks them into his belt on each Jesus. side. <laughs> yeah. They're in surprisingly good condition compared to most of these rooms, which seems to be a bit dusty. Uh, I guess we'll head back out and um, head or look to see where the captain is, because I imagine he probably would have gone into a cabin while we were looking in here. Well, yeah. I guess we'll start heading down the other end of the ship. Yeah. You wander back down that way and... Captain Thule. You're at the forecastle. Which, you would know on a ship this size, the forecastle generally uh, generally serves as the cabin for the quartermaster. Not for the distribution of cargo, but the quartermaster's personal quarters. And you and Katrana approach this space. Hmm. Mm. I've lost where I've put the I've lost where I've put the forecastle on my large <laughs> picture of this bloody map. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big ship, big ship. Katrana, you're right, this is a big ship, but much about it looks very pleasing. I very think oh, he we just, just uh, Well we just oh, uh, opened the door and walked just... in. <laughs> well Well there's a um, bunch of barrels here. You step into the forecastle. You're aware that a forecastle on a ship this size is generally two or three rooms. And this first door just leads you into a room full of cannons and what seems to be barrels of shot. Hmm. Or of balls and powder. I don't see any of the... Of cannons. <laughs> I don't see any of the insignia that we've been sent to look for, but what's through here? And I go to open the door with... Any without any fear, because you know, danger sense. Yeah. And more cannons. What seems What's to be it? another door over here that would lead you to what you assume to be the quartermaster's cabin proper behind the various de- behind the various gun decks. 
Yeah, I'm just strolling, just strolling through the, you know, this is, this is routine boat walk-in. This is nothing unusual, so I'll put, grab the, the handle of the door. Yeah. And as you swing open this door, the... The uh, curtains are all drawn over the porthole here, and the room is in a sort of dark grey murk. But still, fairly easy to see in here for the both of you. Oh, there seems to be a chest over there. And it takes you a moment to realise in the murk, but sitting on the bed is a human form, sort of slumped over, head down and sort of his hands just resting uh captain um maybe I see it too. Yes. what is uh, do you want to go and shake him or just inspect yeah. a little bit let's have a look i walk right up to him and point, poke him on the shoulder yeah and say my sir you're the you quartermaster of the ship yes you walk up to him and poke him, and as soon as you touch him, pretty much, he sort of groans and stiffens, and his back arches, he arches backwards, and just, get, get away from here, jerks forwards, jerks back, and you see his chest sort of heaving with the deep breath he's taking, and he starts jerking, and your fell certain isn't in response to you poking him, but, you know, sometimes you're stronger than you expected, but... He seems to shake for a few seconds, and there's a audible crack. <gasps> uh, oh. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's a normal, yes, like... It starts um... to bulge, and what seems to be a small human arm starts worming out from inside his chest. Oh, what the... That's not normal. <laughs> uh, Game that's... over, man. Game over. An arm? Tears, tears through and... Blood starts squirting out of the cavity with the, what you assume to be the last pumps of his heart, and another arm, and... Um, the captain, uh, should we get out of here? Uh, should we get out of here? The captain, being, a, being a, 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 a carefully considerate philosophical man of religion, um, picks up his whatever it is, um, and knows fine well that bodies don't come out of bodies that way. He's been around enough. He knows how birthing happens, and it ain't like this. Yeah, yep. that's not um, normal. That's, uh, that's um, some so, kind of mutant. Yeah, he is going to bring up his his halberd, um, and he's going to shout very loudly, um, so that the other guys can hear at the top of his voice. We got ourselves some trouble. Yeah. And then a <laughs> roar, and then this is a roar that you all know because you've seen me fight. Um, and you hear that roar, my battle cry, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and he basically just he just is, is sticks the battle the cry hull. worth fifteen hundred channel points? Wait, what? Uh, is it? Is that just just uh, just out of curiosity? What was a redemption? Oh, <laughs> scorn! <laughs> the, we'll we'll get there. I promise you. Don't worry, he's about to do a murder. <laughs> right. There's been a murder. <laughs> so I get, yeah, I get that, and I just, I just stick my whole bar, quickly flip it, and just boom, two hands right yeah. into the into the belly. Of Easy the enough. Beast. What seems to be climbing out of what you assume was the quartermaster is fairly static, since it's attempting to climb out of a rib cage. You just slam your halberd through it, and. You assume you've killed it. It's not moving anymore. Hmm. I look round at Cartrana. Well, now we know why the good lady Sunvani. I didn't want to get her fine gentleman in this mess. Huh. Mm hmm. I think there's more to this story than meets the eye. I think you're right there. Well, let's go and see what the others have found. Oh, well, I they've just not been. Yes, yes, yes. But let me just look on this table first. I want to just make sure there's no documents I can go through. Absolutely. I'm just going to roll a guidance first. Yeah. Uh, 
and then I'm just gonna just wanna look on the table to see if there's anything that I can read. Yeah, I can you just look about the table. There don't seem to be any documents here. It is definitely a writing desk, but there's nothing really left there. There's a fancy calligraphy set. You could probably write some nice documents. And there's a what you assume to be a holy symbol of a wave curling left and right. Hmm. Easy enough for you to recognise as the holy symbol of Umberly. Holy symbol of Umberly? Umberly, who is essentially the god... She's considered an evil god, a destructive god, that sailors would worship to avoid destruction at sea. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is an evil god. This is uh, this is not a good omen. I Ooh. really doubt. We're going to have to be Umberly. very... Sh- Umberly. 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 Say, the- uh, should we double check that chest right beside you, Captain? Well, before I do that, I'm just going to roll this corpse over and see if it's got any keys on it. Mm-hmm. Good He's idea. He's a quartermaster. He might well have some. Yes, yes. Good idea. Yep. Yeah. You roll over the corpse, and the smaller corpse is emerging from the corpse. <laughs> and the larger of the two corpses does carry a single key. It's a small brass key you assume would match the chest. Well, I'll give it... The- I'll have, I'll have a look at the chest. I'll just eye it kind of cautiously through one of my good eyes. And then I'll look at it as if it might be about to hurt me or turn into something and eat me hand. Yeah, yeah, you, you may want to keep your hands away from... You look at it, it looks like a chest. Go ahead and roll me a perception. Uh, no, that's that. Oi, I'm very perceptive through my good eye. (laughs) Yep, you don't see anything that would obviously indicate a trap. Seems like it's a chest, probably holds something. It's not making any noise, it's not got any needles or anything. I reach down and I put the key in the lock, turn it and open to see what excitement awaits me. Hopefully it's gold. Yep. (laughs) You click the key in, turn it, lift the lid. Make me a dexterity saving throw. With advantage. Bloody you knew you can, there was something up about that chest. You can hold shit. Yeah, it looks like it's booby trapped. Yeah, we should have checked it for uh, traps. Yep. Uh, dexterity saving throw. Yep. Um, where, where is this? Which one's the saving throw? Uh, the modifier to the right. Modifier to the right. Hold oh. shift, it'll roll advantage. Oh. Not doing anything. Evidence for ability checks, not saves. Oh, yes, that was for, that was for me. Uh, I cast oh, right. guidance a while ago, but for some reason I didn't. Ab- Okay, yeah, sorry. They've updated the sheets. Uh, click on the word dexterity, and it'll then prompt you. <laughs> I see. So uh, you want a saving throw, yes? Yes. That'll be this one. But I get advantage. Oh, advantage. That's the best advantage I could have had. <laughs> well, almost. Wow. That's a nice discrepancy between the two. And yeah, yeah you're, as you open this lid, there's that little twinge in your brain that saved you from countless deaths in countless battles that says you should not be in front of this chest right now. And you leap back across the room as... What? As the lid opens up, there's a shiver and... spines shoot out from this chest in all directions. Most of them slamming into the lid, some of them flying above your head as you dive down. And then the chest seems to be silent. Hmm. Very clever, that. Do the same. Right, let's have a look inside. Yeah, you look inside. Go on. I I was going to cast resistance on you. Um, It's a cantrip, so it doesn't use up any of my spelled slots. You've got time while he's 
you turn around to see him diving across the room and quickly think it's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's going to give you Rusty an extra deep. Landing at your feet. <laughs> good dive. I'll give you a bonus to your next saving throw if you need one, but... Oh. Mm -hmm. You hop back up and look down into the chest and you see what you expect to see treasure or the mechanics of a trap. What you actually see is a small creature that seems to be some sort of cross between a small terrier, as you'd expect to see on a ship, and a sea urchin. Wait. These various spines that presumably shot out of the terrier urchin urchin dog thing. It sounds like one of Brutus's ex-wives that he was telling me about. Maybe she had some children. Mm. <laughs> it seems to be hostile. It seems to have almost shot out spines as a reaction, but it's not doing anything now. Hmm. Nothing in here except for this. Sea urchin? Hey, urchin dog. Cortrana, yeah. what do you think? What do you make of this? I, uh, I'm not sure what that is, but we should probably keep it locked up inside of this chest. I don't know. I can. I'm gonna double check to see if I have a spell right now that can tell us more about this. Well, I look at it and I take my old bird and I stand well back because it'd be a long device. So I can just kind of prod it a little bit and see what it does. Hmm. Then you prod it with the end of the halberd, and it doesn't seem to be. It's not snapping at you. It doesn't seem to be hostile at all. It seems more scared than anything. Hmm. It was stuck in a dark box. The box opened and it reflexively shot out spines. Oh, it seems to be a defense mechanism. It's just it's just scared. It's like a turtle that would hide in its shell or a porcupine. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think I'll take your first gambit. Close the chest again. We don't want anyone else getting... Well, there's, not, there's totally nothing in there, is there? There's nothing beyond this. There's nothing else thing. in there at all. Lock the chest. Yeah, you close up the chest and lock it. There's no sounds of movement from inside. Hmm. Right then. Well, let's hope Razzler and Brutus are still alive. Yeah, yeah, let's go check up on them. And... Brutus and Colden. As you were coming out of the map room with uh, Captain Euromin in tow. And he keeps insisting that you call him Captain Euromin. And you hear the iconic sound of Thule's battle cry. Which is? Which probably indicates. There's, no There's been a murder! <laughs> Together eventually. <laughs> Which would seemingly indicate that there's been some kind of murder somewhere on the ship. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's about a body. Yeah. Well, we should mm -hmm. get a move on then. Well, I'm in no hurry. Captain, you're in pants behind us, is walking very slowly anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you scared, Captain? That, I guess uh, we well, after we heard the shout. I, I'm not going to be in a hurry to rush down after, so <laughs> we'll head down. I imagine by the time they come out, we'll have get over to them, so they yeah. don't need to come up yeah, to us because you would have just come out as yeah. we got over okay. to because you were there. Yeah, well. yeah. Hmm, you get over there so... about the same time they're coming out yeah. of the space. Oh well, hello. We are just shouting, Cam. Nice to see you, Golden. Gather everybody up. One second. And you, I saw lady. The yes. strangest, strangest of things. Cartran and I, we found the quartermaster, except he wasn't quite himself. Oh. Well, I don't know what that means, but this here would be Captain Urin, Captain. <laughs> Captain Urin. Oh, can you? He says he's, he's captain of another, of another ship. What he's the crew saved. of this ship saved him from. Oh, Caillou was saved. Yeah. He also said something about... Yeah. Did you find out anything? 
He said there's parasites uh, doing a number or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we just we just saw a parasite and it killed a quartermaster. Oh, well, more well, accurately, killed the quartermaster. it was inside the quartermaster and it came outside of him. It was <laughs> unusual, quite disturbing, if I'm honest. A uh, hand just just protruded from its stomach. I put the poor quartermaster out of his misery like it's the only right thing to do. And I made sure that thing didn't continue its journey out into the air and perhaps try and... I know what it was going to do. But I also found a dog thing that was, well, a creature. Small yeah. creature. Not like... Very odd. Very strange. It was yeah. almost like it was mixed with a... I don't know, a grub or something. It was just very a, weird. A, a sea urchin. Um, it uh, it would it, it tried to attack us in self-defense. Like that'd like, be one what of these parasites, it? Captain Urin. Uh, but he was not. Uh, he didn't want to hurt us. Oh. Oh. Captain Urin, what's going on here? I'm. Uh oh. Not sure. Um, I'm worried. I'll take a roll with insight check. <laughs> if, yeah. if we if we if we take too long, do you think these parasites are gonna eat through the cargo? Should we try to make our way to the cargo faster before? Definitely. We we have to clear the ship of parasites. Uh, hmm. Pablo, you rolled that privately. I have no idea what you. Oh, sorry, uh, I self rolled. That was a twenty three. To roll to the DM at least. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, he definitely has no clue what you're talking about. He okay. seems to be intent on getting you to go below decks and help him clear the ship of the parasites. Mm -hmm. Guy's got a couple of big blades. He might be able to help out. Well, okay, we should perhaps figure out what these parasites are before we start bending into the dark. There, C Captain Urin, the 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 the, the creature that the captain here has described. The 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 dog thing with the the part dog part urchin thing is that would that be one of these parasites that's not anything i've heard of before what what be a parasite <laughs> that thing what grows inside of you it's uses like a gigantic you to, insect yeah it, it like uses you to let itself live it tries to get inside of you. I had them once. I had to, uh... I had to take some tablets, but they passed through and it was fine. <clears throat> <laughs> the, um, yeah, yeah that, that's not a fun process at all. Uh, you no, don't I'm deworm now, anyway. Oh, well, you that's... Eat, that, you yeah. eat seagulls. They're not good for you. Listen. Mm -hmm. Rats are the skies, they say. <laughs> Rats are delicious. <laughs> they're, they're, yes, I guess if you have nothing else to eat, uh, rats can be kind of good. I mean, I'm just eating dinner, but it was there, so, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's food. Exactly. But it'd be food. Now, Captain, Captain Urin, is it? That'd be it, Captain. Very good. Captain I Urin. I need me a few rats, too. We're not going to be eating rats. We're going to be eating well, the finest here, right? foods when we get our treasures and bring them back. Them. Yes, yes, yes. We're gonna have lots of money then. We can get a lot, a lot of better things than stew. Neighbors for us, it'll be. Ooh, yes. Where's your crew, Captain? My ship was sunk. Hmm. Oh, it'd be well, right bye. that you were the last one off it. Yes. Oh. Well, um, do you know what uh, what killed uh, your crewmates? Um, Captain Thule just sort of stops off and walks down <laughs> the stairs. Oh, I'm gonna follow Captain Thule. <laughs> yes, let's go. Let's go with and Captain. Say, I was saying to him, Captain, he was the last one off his ship. Why is he the only one still alive? I'm worried. Maybe he's the bad guy. Stay and keep an eye on uh, Captain Yorin. Mm -hmm. He follows the others down the stairs. I follow after him. We're keeping an eye on them. I hope it's not an ambush. Bring up the... 
one second. As you come down this staircase, Captain. One second. Hmm. Are we? I didn't know I'm growing bushes. And you see what largely what you saw from looking through the grates above this large dark space which looks like any other gun deck you'd see on a ship this size hammocks strung wherever you can string a hammock cannons below that and otherwise mostly empty up here Let's see that ambience on that'll actually work this time some of these music tracks are not working, others are. It's very weird. Yeah. So, we can see through the grates here as well if we shine a light. Are these the grates above you? Oh, okay. Here, okay. Not below you. So these are light. looking up towards... They're bringing a lot of light from above, but they're looking up towards the main deck. Okay, so not down to the cargo hold. Hmm. Well then. So. This so all looks to be a bit underused. Where is everyone? Why is there no bodies? Why is there no crew here? He looks over at Captain Yunan and um, just looks back and then walks off. One crew we got to get down and get this, whatever boxes we're after. Captain yeah. yeah, I mean, Urania said that the crew were either killed or ran off, sir. As you... Nice. As you move towards the stern, Captain, you will notice over at one of the tables on this end, there are what seem to be three bodies. You assume they're dead, they're not moving. But they are the first bodies you've seen here. Well, I, everyone behind me watches as I pull my old bird off my shoulder and place the sharp pointy end in front of me as I walk forward towards the bodies. Yeah. Be ready, men. We've already seen one of these things explode. There's something else inside it. Yeah, try not to get too close to it. The scary. And... Um as you get closer, you see they don't seem to be moving, they don't seem to be displaying any of the indicators that there's anything crawling like the Quartermaster was. They are all looking towards this hammer. They're all they're on this table, they're slumped around. They are all looking at this hammock. Mm. Do you think, Brutus? You smell anything? I'll take a sniff of the air. Is there anything I can whiff? I mean, a perception check with advantage? Oh, with advantage, you're too kind. You're a dog folk. <laughs> yeah. It 19. smells like dead Pain people, spirit. long abandoned ship, and something odd near that hammock. Something unusual. Something smells off. It smells like you should probably slash it with your halberd. Is there or anything in the hammock? It smells like there's something weird about it. I hear, yeah, I hear um, Brutus talk like that. I just pull my halberd down this and I cut the, the rope that's holding it up on the side closest to me. Yeah. You cut the rope and as the hammock falls, what tumbles out of it with a strange cacophony of noise is a pair of skeletal arms watching the two handles of a concertina, a small accordion. <laughs> as it tumbles out, there's strange noise as the concertina bends. No oh, then. I wasn't expecting like that, Captain. No, I have to say of all the things it could have been, the hands of a dead accordion player wasn't one. Well, that's Two. That's a good start. I wonder if we'll find any more. Where's his flesh gone, Captain? Hmm. Why? Where's the rest of his body, more like? Good point. Wow. It's gone. 
Bertrana, can you see anything back there? Um, um, I'm gonna look around a little bit. The room to see if there's anything around. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. There's a bit of a delay. There's 20. Sometimes there's a word delay coming out of. Uh, it's fine. Uh, you look through some of these hammocks, some of the areas around here. Mm -hmm. look. Um, you find a couple of loose, random bits of stuff. What seems to be a bag of coffee, a small jug of some sort of alcohol. My dice is stuck on the screen. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this uh, this bag of alcohol looks good, but uh, should make sure there's no poison in it. Um, Nothing of great interest. What seems to be... It's a lot of little things. Things that you wouldn't think sailors would have left the ship without but not really things of any great value to loot. Hmm. Well, let's keep going, guys. Nothing here. Um, could I have a look at the three dead bodies? See if I can work out how they died. Yeah. They all... Go ahead and make me a medicine check. Nine. They all Nine. seem... Like, they've just been sitting there, pretty much. They are very much dead. They are rotting. They seemingly were all focused on the hammock that your captain slashed up. The hammock that seemed to be holding that accordion thing. But mm. none of them show any direct indicator of how they died. Would you say an accordion is like um, a set of bagpipes? <laughs> sort of horizontal set of bagpipes, maybe. In terms of proficiency. <laughs> uh, you could consider yourself proficient with the concertina, yes. I, I'd like to pick up the concertina. Okay. Yeah. And you pick it up and... I'll play a little song. Alright. And as you start to play the concertina, we're going to go ahead and take a break. <laughs> all right then so you all see brutus pick up this concertina and you hear the strange enchanting music that I didn't know you could Strangely play so well. Chat. Yes, I'm feeling. Well, it's like a, it's like a better set of bagpipes. Similar concept. Oh, I didn't realize you were so good at that. Pauses after a moment as Brutus is paused still on the concertina. <laughs> and he's definitely found something. Hmm. At the very least. Something about this feels uh, special. I'm going to keep this. If that's all right with you, Captain. Well, it's quite all right. So you seem to be quite attuned to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll uh, strap it to my belt. Yeah. Easy enough. And um, seemingly you're met with two large doors at the stern. And the ladder's downwards. Hello, I'm going to stand. Hmm. Um, I just cut the, I cut the what the, the rope holding up the, the hammocks and just walk, walk through. Yeah, easy enough to. Chop down most of these hammocks. Step through the space. Open the door. 
you open this door and what seems to be a armory, various swords and boarding axes in racks oh. around the space. Oh. 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 Hey. Barrels of gunpowder, sharpening benches, the usual stuff you'd expect to see in a ship of this size. Well, needing some sort I of walk weapons. in. And I, Look what we found. Oh. Wow. Oh. What's oh. in the armory, sir? Oh, some weapons and armor. How about it? So uncivilized. <laughs> oh. I just cross my arms and watch. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth is, of I'll course, being uh, conspicuously unarmed. I see a telescope, uh, and I and I pick it up. Make me a perception check. Not for your telescope, specifically, but for looking around. <laughs> if you look through a telescope, you can't see much of anything. <laughs> Everything's so far away. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're looking down the wrong end. Whoa, you're right, Garbdana. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, perception. A good captain's not blessed with an abundance of brains. <laughs> 21. <laughs> yeah, um, what you'd expect to see in here. Uh, some long swords, some muskets, some pistols, a handful of daggers, various tools that could be used as weapons. Something that notably catches your eye. One of the hangers on the wall that you would assume to hold a long sword it's empty, but as you look at the wall, the dust filters oddly around it, as if there's something there. Oh, well, what do we have here? There's, there's a bit of smuggling going on with the good lady, was there? Ha <laughs> Hey, me lads, get in here and have a look at this. Watch me back. Um, Golden, um, um, are you coming into the room? I thought I might hang around here with Captain Urin for a bit. Oh, hey. Very good. Sure. Sounds good. Oop. What um. is the Captain? What you found? Well, look at this here. Doesn't that strike you as very strange? And I point to where I was looking for the, the crack in the wall. Looking at it closer and Brutus looking at it as well, the dust here seems to almost make the shape of a sword in the air. But there's clearly nothing there. So if I might speak uh, plainly, I think there might be an invisible sword there. Um, um, is there any type of magic maybe in this room to be? Can we? I sense? imagine the, the sword being invisible might be magic. Might be magic. No. Can we sense anything? Not unless you want to cast detect magic. You don't really get any distinct sense of magic in here. Mm hmm. So there's no there's no type of magic abilities or anything like that. Um, I try hmm. and reach out and grab this sword. Yeah, you reach <laughs> out and... I mean, you can see where you assume there is a sword. You reach out and grasp what feels like the hilt of a sword. It's weighted like a sword. Not that you have much experience with them. It's. Uh, it looks like it might be invisible. Yeah, some kind of invisible sword, Captain. Hmm. Oh, sir. Well then... I wonder what that'd be useful for, hitting ghosts or something, eh? Imagine cutting yourself. Like a ghost sword? I mean, you are now very aware that you're holding the hilt of the sword that you have no idea of the length of. Is he able to... Somewhere like, in front of you. Is he able to use the sword? Look, he grabbed it from the right end. <laughs> Hit it with the pointing stick. The pointy I'm, just, I'm just gonna stab the floor with it and see how long it is. I just had a strange thought. It was like a premonition that we were joined by 18 people that just came along and watched through our eyes at this adventure. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome. Strange luck, Captain. But oh, I hope it wasn't the came over me. That'd be a very <laughs> strange thing to say. 
I don't know what I don't know what it was. It just it was like a premonition, of, 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 through the veil. Well, what were you thinking there? This, do you want this weird magic invisible sword or not? A weird magic invisible. How do you know even how long? How long is it there, Brutus? What are you thinking? What is it? I stab it at the wall. Yeah, hmm. and you stab it at the wall. It seems to be maybe two and a half, three feet long. It like that long. Feels like a cutlass. In hmm. shape and size. Is that a sword of some kind? Like a, a, what, a cutlass, is it? Not a short sword, bigger. Oh, no, I don't invisible, you... is it? Give an it... invisible cutlass. Let me have a look at it, so to speak. I mean, you can't, it's invisible. <laughs> you can't see it! <laughs> what happens if you put it down somewhere? And you forget where you put it? Then, it's, then you have to yourself. look around for it. Don't drop it. <laughs> what a strange thing. What a mystery. Oh, pointless bloody weapon. Oh, it's um, definitely got a point on it. That's why it'd be a sword. <laughs> mm-hmm. As they long as you want don't this, drop um, it, you're all right. They don't I, want an invisible cutlass. I reach, um, I take, take it from, and I feel the weight of it. Is it weighty? Carefully past it. That'd be the wrong end. <laughs> Well, I do have an invisibility. See invisibility? Oh. Yes. So you see invisible creatures and objects if they were visible and you can see into the ethereal plane. I can cast that to detect it. I think we already know it's there, though. I would like you to see it. But you mm -hmm. can look at it. You have fairly established there is a sword. <laughs> so is it is it worth it, though, trying to see Anybody invisibility? Anybody use this? To a sword. Oh, it looks like everybody needs one. Crap. Well, it might well, be, but it's invisible. Well, there's special properties. Maybe well, it's invisible. Property. You could probably, like, stab someone without them knowing you've got a weapon. And then they'd be like, oh, no, I'm dying <laughs> and I don't know why. It wasn't me. Call, I haven't got anything in my hand. I like what you're but, thinking. But, uh, but uh, will you be able to use the sword, that is, if it's invisible? I mean, yeah, if, as long as you know where it is and where to grab it, I suppose you could. Hmm. You get used to it, I guess. You can yeah. be looking like you're going to shake somebody's hand when actually you're stabbing them. Yeah. Wouldn't be That's the last super dangerous. Time. I like it. Yes. I think this yes. is a sword that speaks it... volumes. Mm -hmm. You should give it a name. I reckon you should call it a firm handshake. <laughs> <laughs> And so the, the sword <laughs> of mystery is given a name. Just uh, don't firm. misplace it, whatever the hell you do. Yes. Gonna, don't I'm put it down anywhere. Stick it on me back. I've well, got the good news you. is uh, if we get looted, um, nobody will know where it is. Unless they try to find it or, or something, so... That's a, I think that's we've a good got thing. a good future ahead of us. Oh, As yeah, you very. Grasp the sword, though, and you whisper a firm handshake. <laughs> it starts to glow visibly. Oh. The blade glows a deep green, and ghostly visages appear across it as it forms what looks to be a green, ghostly cutlass. Well, <laughs> Pierce, I can see it now. Well, that ruins the advantage, don't it, that? Mm-hmm. You still make pretty sure cool, that we, that we don't say its name. Is it still glowing? It is, yes. You Has it not stopped glowing? Again. Having... Oh, so... Having grasped it and having named it, you... are mentally aware of the ways to turn it on and off, as it were, to make it invisible again. <laughs> Ooh, wow. It's also in your inventory now. Oh, nice. What a strange weapon. <laughs> you you know how to turn your weapon on and off. That so could definitely help. That means you can make it invisible anytime you want during a fight. It'd be a cutlass made of light. A light cutlass, if you will. <laughs> As opposed to whatever you want, eh? Hey. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's going to be a good cutlass to use. I can imagine everyone will be using them. So oh, you'll have adventure. the light property. Ah, oh, well, you could probably make a fortune on that. Yeah. Merchandise is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Look, 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 look closely. 
Listen, look closely at this watch. And I uh, and, uh, <laughs> speak, its, I speak its name again, and it, it lights up. To look right into it. It's faces. It's faces of the people it's murdered. <gasps> Would you look at that? Oh. What? That's some um, evil. Uh, I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to say this right now, plain and simple. That's pretty messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure it's not a curse sword? Well, it is for the people it killed. Oh, maybe you should um, look at the, the people and see if you can notice anything. You know, I'm glad that my hands don't have the faces of the people I've killed. It makes some encounters very awkward. Yes. Well, seems to be liking my hand. I might just keep this one. <laughs> a good bonus for a captain and a good bonus for Brutus. He's got his musical, magical harps. He, oh, monic, uh, bag, what is it? An accordion. An accordion, yeah, an accordion. There you go. Yes. We. Well, so far, it's two for us and it's none for Lady Sonnevella. Very moist instrument. Got some loot. Do we press on, sir? Yes, let's press on. Press I'm on. sure I'll find something for myself in Colden. Next room. Sir, so, the door's locked. The, I, you there see the door no locked? Such, there's no such thing as a it, locked door. Do you want me to make it unlock, sir? Yeah. Let's get inside and see what there is. I pop out my crowbar and try and crowbar the door open. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and roll my strength check. <laughs> I'm good at these. <laughs> <laughs> now, come I'm on. trouble getting the right yeah. angle there. Okay, right, I think move over. I can, maybe I can assist. Well, this is probably a good time for you to be aware that a crowbar gives you advantage. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Oh, that's per <laughs> Once you get the right angle at it. Oh, got it now, sir. Pop the door open. And you see what seems to be a guest room filled with cobwebs and large, busy spiders. They've been the, the guest. Room, sir. <laughs> I found the spider Dozens room. Dozens of small crates line the wall filled with Ooh. what seems to be rotting pumpkins and spice sacks. To the aft is a small but comfortable bed. A human form appears to be sleeping in it, lying next to what seems to be a large scythe. There's a... At the head of the bed sits a large, very fresh-looking pumpkin. Not a rotted one. And spiders scurry about this place everywhere. Oh, just a hit pause by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Cam, there seems to be a lot of pumpkins in here, and spiders, and a sleeping guy. Is he alive, Brutus? You always give him a poke. Just say if he's alive. I'll, uh, I'll come into the room, and I'll come over to the bed, and I'll give him a poke. See if I can notice any breathing occurring. Why am I staring in the corner of my screen? Let's. <laughs> I don't know what's going yeah. on with this today. I can't sit still. Apparently, I said I was doing so much stuff earlier. It's definitely not breathing, but as you approach, you see, he seems to be wearing the suit of a rich landowner, and you step closer and. There's something off about this body, you don't quite understand it at first, but then... He's missing a head. His head isn't there. <laughs> Got it. That's and not as you Sir, I think I know why he's not breathing. He, he rises up <laughs> from the bed as you poke him, and lifts the pumpkin at the head of the bed in one hand, and <gasps> the pumpkin itself rings out in this deep voice. Thine heads are wrong. Let me fix them for you. Ooh. Mr. Giant Pumpkinhead. Hmm. 
I bet you that's what he's called. And roll for initiative. Oh. I get advantage on it because I got that thing like did. two hours ago. You do get advantage exactly. On it. Yep. That that did. That didn't do. It. <laughs> Just <laughs> roll again. I hope you rolled at least good. Hmm. <laughs> uh, won't let me roll it again. Oh, for God's sake! Just roll one d twenty plus four. Yes. Oh, oh. That's better. Oh, look at that. got a 20. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Which is at 17. Ding. 17. It's all right. I'm all right with a five. And for some reason, Cartran is showing up as new character. <laughs> that is very much not your name. <laughs> did, you, yeah. did you name your character from the sheets? I don't think there's Jack O' Lantern. It's a headless sea horseman. Okay. Is he? Oh. <laughs> a headless sea horseman. <laughs> what it says. Yeah, yeah, I know I read it. <laughs> I love it. That's funny. I didn't stop Lord Combat music because I had to redo all the music as we were starting the stream. We're in combat. <laughs> Captain Thor, you're acting first in this combat as the creature rises up. That's my combat music. I don't like the look of this at all. I, I also don't like the fact that I can't get right to it. I'm going to barge past Brutus. Pick up Pick up the barrels at the side of the bed, one in each hand. All right. And I'm gonna smash the barrels right into this thing with its head. All right then. Thus clearing a path where I can stand next to it and then hit it properly. Yeah, that's fair. Go ahead and roll me a strength check for grabbing and hitting it with barrels. Oh, and I'm also very angry about it. I'd like to go into a rage. All right. Because this thing is just not right at all. Got to roll on the wild magic table. Oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> uh, great, because it's very spammy. <laughs> um, wild of magic. Where do I? Uh, it should be under wild surge. Okay. If you go back to your features, it should be under wild surge. Oh yeah. Here we go. Roll. I think you Why? need to open the table and then there should be a roll yeah, on that. Yeah, it's a link to the table at the bottom, sorry. There we go. Nailed it. Got there eventually. An intangible spirit appears in five feet of one creature of your choice. At the end of the current turn, the spirit explodes. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Well... In that case, can I put it at the end of the bed behind them? Yep, that's a space. <laughs> draw in your spirit. One second. So as you enter your rage, you summon this. That's not the colour I chose. I'm going with it. You summon what seems to be a small pixie at the end of the bed. Shouldn't have been that colour, but we're going with it now. And it <laughs> hovers there. And you're aware from past experience that it's going to explode soon. But for now, it just seems to be hovering there as you move closer and 
Roll your strength check for hitting the headless sea horseman with the barrels. I've got advantage. You do have advantage now. But it only rolled once, so I'll roll it again. And it's a bit worse, so there you go. As, uh, if you mouse over the existing rolls a little. So you don't need to actually roll again. Got you. Just for future reference. Thank you. Yeah, and you slam into him with this barrel. He's shaken back by it, falls to his knees as you move closer. Anything else from you, Saul? I... I think I'm done this time. I've got myself where I need to be. And that will do right. everything. Thank you. And the headless sea horseman looks up at you as you slam these barrels down on him. And he grasps this scythe in his hands and swings it from his knees, swings it up at you. I've missed the button. Does 20 hit you, Captain? Oh, it does. All right. That is uh, 13 psychic damage and 5 flashing, which is how Two slash Jeez. fifteen total. And can you make me a wisdom save? Probably not. Oh. No, it doesn't matter. Wisdom saving throw. Size is 17. As the scythe blade slashes against you, you feel something, but you manage to control yourself. And the horseman clambers back to his feet, looks out at you, and at Br and Brutus. I think it's time to unleash the Kraken. And I'm going to um, use a key point to bring up my arms of Astral Cell. Um, he needs to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Yeah. I need to work out what the, uh, the DC of that should be. Uh, 8 plus your monk level plus your wisdom bonus. My wisdom bonus? What, sorry? Uh, eight plus monk level plus wisdom, so that's eighteen. Fast man. Okay, he fails. Okay, so he takes some damage. Do 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 do. He wrong. takes force damage equal to two of my martial arts die. So my martial arts die, I think, are a one d six currently. So he takes two d two d six damage. I'm sorry. Eight plus proficiency plus your ability modifier for future. Oh, well, he failed it either way, so. Jesus. He takes Start two force damage from me Thank popping you. out my arms. <laughs> uh, so that's my bonus action. So I'm going to punch him twice now. Right. With these tentacle arms that have. These actual tentacle arms that have appeared around me. As the so. small dog suddenly grows tentacles, starts <laughs> striking at this creature with them. Whap. I probably miss. miss. And whap. Hit. Pow pow. Uh, I'll make that last one a stunning strike if I can. Yep. So, wisdom save for stunning strike, isn't it? Uh, can't save. Thank you. One of the two. Uh, 14, what's your DC? 16. Thank you. So, he is now stunned until. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, with him being stunned, I'm going to take a step backwards away from him, because that was only can't attack me while he's stunned, right? Will be accurate. And that will be the end of my turn. Alright then. Colden. You're outside, uh, but you hear the sounds of combat coming from this room over here. Yeah, what's Captain Yuri's reaction? Uh, he's staying behind you, but he... Also, here's a sound. He's readying his weapon. 
but he's okay. waiting to see if you run in that. Um, in that case, I shall do that. Draw my sword. We'll wait as fast as I can. One. Doesn't remind me that I should probably roll for his initiative. Completely forgot I was there. He likes after. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um. And if I get there, about occupying a square. So I, I'm standing in the doorway, looking in to see what's going on. Yeah, and you look in and you see the captain and Brutus. Brutus has got his tentacles out, and they seem to be fighting a headless bloke carrying a pumpkin. As you do. Uh, I, I'm going to draw my sword. That will be my action, I guess. And uh, then I will... I'll, I'll end my turn there. Yeah, drawing your sword's free. Is it? In 5e. Oh! In that case, I'll draw my sword and still do... <laughs> still stand there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cam, you're a minimal act. I forgot him. He's going to rush in through this other door. See what's going There's on. There's another here. door! Mm-hmm! It was clearly that. <laughs> He just sort of exclaims something at seeing that guy. He does not have ranged attacks. He doesn't seem to recognize. No, he doesn't act like he recognizes it. He just acts like he wasn't expecting to see a headless guy with. A... Yeah, that's all right. Which is a fairly normal reaction when you think about. It. Well, it mean it is. I'm sure we all probably did the same. We saw this thing first time. And Katrana. Mm-hmm. So my character is going to cast Bless. All right. With a twist, I'm the pumpkin-headed guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make this a challenge. <laughs> so that's going to go on Captain Thor, Brutus, as well as Colden. And I'm just going to take a step back here. Oops, oops, no, 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 no. Not that far back. Oops. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just gonna go and. Oh. I'm kind of, kind of in his way now. I'll go on top of this area right here. Squeeze out into a corner somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna squeeze between the uh, between the cannon and end my turn. All right. And back around to Captain Thor. Will the explodey pixie explode this round? At the top yes, of the round. Sorry, it will explode at the technically at the end of initiative. You are correct. I immediately forgot it was there. Uh, each creature within mm -hmm. five feet of it, which is just this guy. Looks even the dex save fails. So it takes one d6 damage. You want to roll one d6 for me? You're. Oh, that's two. I still don't understand how this game system works. There we are. That's it. Three. Magic number. Magic yes, it is. It's, it's magic the magic number. number. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you deal three damage. It is, in fact, a magic number. Yeah. Uh, you can use a bonus action each of your turns. Pixie, wherever you want it, just for your reference. Yes, I think I'll do the same again as the bonus action and have it right behind him, it seems. The poor pixie doesn't know what's happening to it. One mm. minute it's there. Next minute Summon it's the pixie once again. The art isn't going to improve. <laughs> it's fantastic, Josh. Don't worry. <laughs> As it pops in. What else are you doing with your turn? Well, I'm drawing my Albert. And I'm smashing this thing in the pumpkin head and trying to kill it. Go for it. Aim for the pumpkin. Smashing him in the pumpkin. What is that? Sure if that rolled or not. I'll press it again. Doesn't appear to have done. Don't know. Let's let's Hold just try this way. It might roll lots of times all at once. Let's give this a shot. No. Oh. I don't know. Halbert just not rolling. That is word. Let me try. Okay, Halbert is apparently broken. 
Oh. Do you want me to do a touch roll to see if everything's frozen? Hmm. I did a self roll, it worked. That is. Why is your halberd broken? Why was your halberd not broken earlier? Do your other weapons work? Your other weapons do work. There we go. <clears throat> I figured it out. Roll your halberd. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> there you go. 24. That's my first attack. There you go. I smashed I this pumpkin. Of all of the other attacks that didn't happen. <laughs> You're warming it up. <laughs> and then. Yep. I can attack things. again. Go for it. Which is terrible. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, not I don't even out. think with your bless you're going to be able to. <laughs> you can add a default to that. Yeah. <laughs> your bless. Oof. <laughs> just misses, misses somehow. <laughs> it just misses. <laughs> now I'm going to take a step. And put myself between. Oh, hang on. on all your attacks at advantage because he's stunned. That's a good point. He's still stunned. Yeah. Oh. Roll advantage on that. Yeah, it's an attack. Yeah, it's an advantage one. 15. That will hit. Just one. Good call. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I re roll my first one just in case I get a crit? Yes, go for it. I didn't. Never mind then. <laughs> Anything else for you, Captain? I think I've done. I'm just going to stay here. Keep its attention. All right, then. Mashing pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Make sure you get its head afterwards. Come to its turn. Smash him up with that cutlass of yours. stunned, which makes it incapacitated. Mm -hmm. Which means it's Brutus' turn. He's no longer... He's now no longer... Oh, no, it's the end of my turn. He's end of your stunned. turn. Okay, cool, right, so I'm going to punch him two times with my astral tentacles, because they have reach. Yep. Kawap, and mm. I use my... He's 1d4, so that's a 17 to hit. Hits. Pop him again. Pfft. You get advantage, oh, sorry, advantage. You? Uh, yeah, yeah, you get advantage on... I did the exact same thing, so we'll, we'll class that as being the I first roll. I feel like roll. we had this conversation. <laughs> that, was, that was my first roll. Um, so, sure. So the next one... I don't want d4, so that's a Hits. 13 to hit. Nice, that's an extra 9 force damage. Um, let's burn a key point, let's do a flurry of blows. Pop them two more times. Pop. Pop. Both hit. So that's another 16 force damage. Yep, as the... This back portion of the room just transforms into this flurry of tentacles as these strange appendages that just grew out of Brutus whip around the room, coming around the captain's head to slam into this different angle. Don't know if now it's on your turn. Uh, no, that's me done. I'm doing maths. One second. Started. Hey, you'll be no longer stunned. Thank you. Um, captain Euromin. Going to run in. Nope, hang on. He's stood in the doorway, so I keep clicking the door. I'll run past you, run into this corner, and attack That's the a poor position to be. Horseman. <laughs> Just Was that the comes dog? In and thing? swings his various <laughs> blades around. <laughs> One of his weapons is broken. We won't question it. <laughs> you see, he makes two solid hits against this creature. And Colden. Uh, yeah, I'm going to step into the doorway here. Ooh. Uh, so Colden is going to jump onto this, this table here and bounce off that. Ooh, get over onto the captain's to... head, apparently. Onto the <laughs> captain's head. Part of because our crew. It is. Well, that's it's a part, of, a part of our trick, our training, our tactics. Um, <laughs> You've been training acrobats <laughs> recently. Exactly. Um, so I bounce off that, that table into this corner here where I, I strike it. As I'm flying through the end, I'm going to strike at Pumpkin Head. 
with me dagger. Go for it. See what happens. Dagger him. That do anything. Dab him in the fleshy bits. I think you might have the same problem that I did with my L bird. Uh, I I I'll try again. That's same thing. Nothing happening. One second. Where is? There you go. Try it now. Wait a minute. There we go. And he hit him. I don't know what that bug is. It's very annoying. I'm going to have to fix it for tomorrow. <laughs> That's a strange one. <laughs> That's been introduced um, in the update. <laughs> excellent. That is a hit. It's just what you like. It's what you like with updates. Yep. Um, sneak attack. I'm a rogue, right? Yeah. You are a rogue. Do I get to sneak and attack? And in the game. Dude. <laughs> Uh, you're playing a thief, aren't you? I am. So Tea unfortunately, leave. you don't because you wouldn't have advantage. Okay. Too used to play. Actually, there are other enemies around him, so actually, yes, you do. Never mind. Oh, okay. Um, I have to remember how sneak attack works for things that aren't swashbucklers now. Yeah. <laughs> so we do another eight points of damage to the first. I said sixteen in total. With Thank me you. dagger. Yeah, you stab into it. And this body seems strangely resilient for what looks like a human body, apart from the fact it's missing a head, but your various slashes through it, definitely slowing it down a bit as it starts to recover from this stun. It's limping, as it were. Hmm. Hmm. Anything else from you, Colton? Uh, that will be me, thank you. All right. Katana. Alright, I'm going to move a little bit closer, and I'm going to... Can I cast Sacred Flame from here without hitting my party members? Yeah, because most of them are shot. You'll figure it out. Wow. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so, I'll roll. Oh, let's make a deck save. The fail, so nine radiant damage. Nine radiant damage as I aim sacred flame towards it. Yep. You just That's blast the end. flame out, strikes Deep. against the chest of this creature, and licks up some of the uh, noble garments that it's wearing. And end of your turn, the thing is going to explode. Thing, generic term. That's uh, dexterity save from the horseman. Dex Captain Yurimin. Uh oh. They're both having a bad day. Captain <laughs> Thule, can you roll me a one? Please pop the pixie. <laughs> pop the pixie. It, it really is the magic number. Half. Half, <laughs> yep. Half as effective as it could have been, but still happy it's there. My magic is a blessing, sometimes it's a curse. <laughs> That's the. Pixie pops. Euromin gets knocked back slightly by it and yells, Ah, what was that? And <laughs> glares around as he's trying to figure out what exploded. <laughs> and Captain Thule, your turn. I hope you worked it out because it's about to happen again. <laughs> I look behind the flaming head of Pumpkin and I summon another Pixie. We've got the smashing pumpkins on one side and the pixies are appearing on the other. <laughs> <laughs> Poor pixies must be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just gonna... I'm gonna try, if I can, my new weapon. Because I'm thinking it's a kind of ghost and... And my, my new weapon. Oh, bugger, I can't because I've already done the thing. Never mind, I'll just stick with my old bird and I'll stab the bloody figure with it and try and rip it asunder. All right, then. How do I do that? I don't get advantage. Okay, I'll just roll normal. That's a 12. Oh, but I get bless. So I get to roll a d4 blessed, on top of blessed. that. Which is a 16, 14 for attack. That hits. I'll roll another one. 
I think. Yeah, go ahead. Here we go. 13 plus bless. Also hits. Kartrana is amazing. Thank you. The clock wrong. I am very, very blessed to bless you. Well, we are. <laughs> to bless you. <laughs> 26 as, points of damage. As your halberd sinks into it, how do you want it to die? <gasps> Horrible. I, what I'd like to do is take the old bird right in the middle of it and lift it up so the body falls apart and then the pumpkin falls down right in the middle of it. And then it yeah. just gonna implode. As you heft the halberd up, the body slides down this blade and collapses into two pieces on the bed. The pumpkin lands in the centre of the body. The light fades from the pumpkin's eyes and a small crab comes scuttering out of the pumpkin. I skewer it, with dagger. Yeah, we'll cap the crab. You skewer the crab. Which <gasps> seemingly was the regular crab. I stop barking at it. But it's now a dead regular crab. There it is! Fresh seafood, straight from the belly of a demon. Can't beat it. The scythe falls out of the hand of the creature as the two halves of the body drop on. Not mm. your move away from the pixie before it explodes on you. He steps back as the pixie pops. Hmm. Never, never quite know what's going to happen when I go into battle, but that one, that one was uh, memorable. Mm hmm. Nice kill. Every battle is memorable with you, sir. Are Gee. you getting on with? How are you getting on with that squeeze box, there, Bru Brutus? Uh, it, it's still leaking, but it's, it didn't break. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> the uh, I didn't have to use it in that fight. Years of training this. I pat you on the head with the tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It works. Everybody all right? For a while. <laughs> oh yeah. What was that thing? I don't know. It looked like it had a pumpkin for a head with glowing eyes. Um, did you loot it? Should we loot it? I mean it. It's got a size. We should be looting it. We've been looting it already. Mm. Well, I guess we can't double loot it. Just imagine Colton's hands are like rummaging for it while he's saying that. Yeah. Loot the looted. Unfortunately, your skilled pickpocketing fingers find nothing. No coins on this body, but the scythe looks very interesting. Oh. For someone who likes longer weapons, at least. Mm. Seems a bit bulky for you, but... <laughs> well, is that I, like I'm a long at, reach? Yeah, I was looking at the 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 captain, the captain's halberd there. That'd be a longer weapon, wouldn't it? That's right. It served me very well through thick and thin. This one has. Will I let you let you guys decide what you want to do with that scythe? Maybe somebody wants to take this. Uh, for a man shake. By the blunt end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what kind of weapon is the firm handshake? Uh, the firm handshake is a scimitar. It's a oh, scimitar. scimitar. You're going to give away your weapon, scimitar? Right? You can probably merchandise that away. Well, uh, might be better here getting used. We never know. Might need to... Be uh, a team worker, be our captain. What about that? Golden, what do you say? A scimitar that glows with the souls it's vanquished. How about that? Ooh. Sounds very frightening. <laughs> Be it any use to you? I I can have a I can have a look at it. Well not throw it, it at mine. you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? I don't I don't see it. Wait a minute. Oh no, you can't see it. Oh, you Command wanted to word. shake my hand. 
<laughs> I think you've done them with the point in the end. Stop me playing around like that. Take it. Look, I've made it glow green with the souls it's vanquished. Come on. And I hand them the... Incredible. I hand them the glowing I that. invisible uh, sword. I... <laughs> <laughs> you eventually managed to hand it across to Cold. <laughs> Just going to start eating a pumpkin while I watch these two. <laughs> Should we, uh, yeah. should we press on down then, sir? Aye. Well, Last time more weird pumpkin people. We've seen yeah. all manner of strange things aboard this ship. I it be haunted, or it be cursed. Mm. Definitely or a both. curse. Both. Definitely both. Oh. You just closed the door in my face. Or danger sense. I don't know now what's going to happen. Uh-oh. Uh, guys, don't let this... Uh, there's, uh, there's other rooms here. Did you guys check the rooms upstairs? Uh, up above? That's where we came from, I think. Yes. We go oh, down. Yeah. Oh, is oh. that where we came from? No, I, I don't know. That might... I think there were oh. stairs. Oh, you're oh. right. Yes. There's two doors. Very I don't know where they checked the doors at the end. We're trying to... Well, let's get ourselves over to the other side then. Yep. Aft. Uh, four. Or is it four? I, no, I, is it four, sir? <laughs> I, I would I forwards, would know that, the but the idiot <laughs> controlling me that knows nothing about ships would be the one getting that wrong. I didn't tell you earlier, because yeah, I'm not that intelligent, guys, but yeah, we forgot those doors. <laughs> From the general shape of the rest of the ship, you figure this is probably the galley. It's where the galley should be, at least. And opening this door, you see the kitchen kitchen space. A large squarish room built into the bow here uh, with various crates you assume full of food and cabinets with small locks on them that hold pots, pans and such. And you'd be aware everything here locked just so that pans don't fall off the shell while you're at sea. Uh, all the food you see here in nets, in crates, etc. is rotting and the centre of the room stands this stove that's glowing with this pale greenish light that's clearly visible to you as you walk in. Uh, as far as you can tell, everything else is just a mess. Cobwebs all over the place and seemingly nothing in here. Apart from that What's strange cooking? light. It's a metal stove, you can't see into it, as it were, without opening it. Is there any smell of cooking in the air? <laughs> uh, it smells like something's cooking, definitely. Can I can I try and work out what's cooking? Can it I smell smells like meat? What the ship is cooking. So there's definitely something cooking in there. It smells meaty. All right, mm. stop. Let me take a look. Then you might get to eat it, or it might try and kill you. Oh, maybe I, maybe I'm careful. Well. I'm getting a funny feeling about it. Mm. But I do also want to eat it. It's the same colour as your sword, Golden. <clears throat> oh. That not be natural, that. I don't think so, but... <sighs> well, stand back, guys. Mm. Captain, hello. I'm going to wrap one tentacle around the cannon. Just in preparation. <laughs> in case. <laughs> yeah. And you swing open the door, and as you do, an immediate sense of regret as this terrible smelling green fog billows out from the oven here. Everybody That's makes a constitution. Smell of regret. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it smells like burning. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Well, no, you can't use them sleep for us. Does Bless... Is Bless only for 
thingy pop rolls, or is it for saving well, throws? Like saving throws, I believe. Yeah. Off oh, it does. Like... I think What's... I said that wrong previous. Uh, yep, surprised. attack roll or saving throw. Let's see if this helps. <laughs> it's a five now. Last for one minute, so it's probably getting towards the end of it, but eleven do it for this. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, thank you. I got a fourteen total, which means everybody except for Cam suffers five poison damage oh. as you gag as this cloud as you start breathing this in. <clears throat> you all cough and gag and suffer five poison damage. What? Well, what's oh, the problem? Everyone except except uh, for except the captain for you. who rolled a stupidly high constitution save. We got 24. Oh, Captain. Wow. That's Captain. The... Oh, damage. I was too tall. I was standing above it. You were all too... <laughs> I haven't really up to you yet. <laughs> As the smoke starts to clear, Captain Thor, you see inside, resting in the centre of this oven, is the half-cooked, blackened head of a merfolk, a mermaid. Well, that, that's not right. I don't think you want to eat this, Brutus. I don't think I want to eat it either, sir. Um, I scrape it out with the hall bird and put it on the floor. Yeah, it still smells terrible. Who cooks a head? And I peer in to the back of the oven. Is there anything else in there? Nope. Well, that's disturbing. I did, weird. but I'm not responding at the moment. <laughs> I'm, uh, I headed out the room. Outside of the poisonous fog. Yeah. Captain, this room smells like ass. I suggest we leave. You be the best judge of that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sure you don't want to stay? You're a little bit lucky. No, no, I'm okay with five damage. Five damage is good enough for me. <laughs> Let's go. I pick up a knife with the tentacle and just fling it past Colton. <laughs> <laughs> and you all head out back into the main part of the upper gun deck. Is Captain Yorin with us? Uh, yeah, he was waiting outside the room. Okay. He is following you throughout the ship. He just tends to stay behind and not follow you into rooms. It seems like he's expecting you to do most of the work. He's a, he's an old guy, though, right? So Yeah. That yeah. could be the excuse he uses. Yeah. Well, it's the it's excuse just... I use. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the real reason is he's being controlled by Josh and Josh forgets to move him. <laughs> Josh has got more important things to do. Oh. Are we talking about me or Captain Urin again? <laughs> Captain Urin. <Yuri>. Yes. <laughs> Best ventriloquism act this side of the shore. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, right. We'll be down, down these down. stairs. Down, yes, Golden. You look down the stairs, you can see from mm. up here that there seems to be some large almost a large structure at the bottom of these stairs where all the cannons and all the things you'd expect to see on the lower gun deck have gathered in the centre and formed this structure right at the bottom of the stairs here. Would it be the kind of thing if, if the ship had listed and everything had kind of rolled into one place on the ship? Maybe, but you'd expect that to show similar signs up here. It yeah. really doesn't. And you're not sure why it would all be dead centre. Well, the treasure isn't going to walk itself up here, these chests that Lady Snovla wants. Yeah, they're down below. Must be in the cargo deck area. And you're right. You're going to head down the stairs. Down the mm. stairs we go. One second. And as you move down these stairs, 
the first thing you'll notice is this massive structure that seems to be comprised of a mix of cannons and whatever junk that could be found around here and what seems to be almost a fleshy mass of presumably bits of animals you see some bits of animals here skeletons and such quite possibly you found a number of members of and as you move down to this space and it starts to catch your eye this is definitely some sort of location and as you get to the bottom of these stairs surrounding you here are a number of what seem to be skeletons but as you look at them each each of the skeletons has resting inside the rib cage a dark greyish green eel and all the I... skeletons and eels draw their swords and look at you can i cast vigilant blessing before you can, but this is also where we're going to end. So, ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Cliffhanger. <laughs> we shall note it for next time.